welcome to Bigfoot Knitcast. Um, I am Sheila and I'm coming to you from the sunny Oklahoma right now. Today's weather is beautiful. It's over 60 degrees and we have 60 mile an hour wind gusts. So it's a little bit breezy to put that mildly. And it's such a beautiful day. You can probably hear my dogs barking like mad. Um, people, <laughs> our house backs up to a, um, uh, like a track, like a walking track. Uh, there's an elementary school and a walking track and the neighborhood people like to walk the track and the dogs like to bark their heads off at them. And that's just the way that goes. It's been cold and rainy for the last several weeks and the dogs haven't spent much time in the backyard just because it's cold <laughs> and now it's beautiful. Yesterday was, was gray and rainy and today it's sunny and beautiful. Only you can't, um, you can't hardly walk outside, it's so windy. So, okay, we're gonna jump right in and I'm just gonna tease you a little bit because this is the podcast that's going to announce the winner of all of these goodies. Okay, they're in bags. I'm gonna pull it all out and show you in a little bit, but there are one, two, three, four skeins, of, well, three skeins of yarn and a mini, mini skein set and there's needles you can see in there, but I'm gonna pull all that out in just a little bit. Um, yes, I'm teasing you. And um, we'll get into all of that and who the winner is. So yes, I'm a horrible person because I'm making you watch the entire podcast before, before you find out. I guess you could always just fast forward, and then, you know, but you'd miss all my awkwardness. So I don't know, it might be worth it just to watch and laugh. Um, I wanted to kind of go over a few announcements just um, right at the beginning. That way, if you did get bored and fast forward, then you at least have that part. Um, Bigfoot Fibers is not doing um, Dallas Fort Worth Fiber Fest this year. And it's not because I don't love Dallas Fort Worth Fiber Fest. It's, it's an excellent festival if you have a chance to go. Um, it just simply has to do with the way that the Wayfair versus, now I've forgotten which state it was, North Dakota, South Dakota, Indiana, I, I don't remember. Um, it's a pretty important Supreme Court decision and it set a precedence where um, each and every state has gone after the big online retailers. But unfortunately that also, uh, the law affects every online retailer, not just big like Amazon and Wayfair, uh, those kinds of, you know, Walmart, those big ones, but it also affects micro businesses like myself. I'm a one woman show. And because of the tax burden that it puts on um, on micro businesses. Now, I don't mean because it makes me pay more taxes. It, it's, not, it's relatively a small amount. It's just simply the um, man hours required to figure out if I owe and who I owe and how to send it. <laughs> and you'd think that'd be relatively simple, but honestly, from state to state, it's a gigantic time suck. Um, to the point that it's almost, um, if some of the states go crazy with it, then I I may not sell to certain states. It's that crazy. Um, Colorado alone has, I don't know, like a thousand different tax jurisdictions. Um, and, and just dealing with my state, I, I don't want to turn this into a pity party, wah, wah, um, because it is, it is my business and I did choose to go into this business, but they actually make it extremely hard. <laughs> Um, in my own state of Oklahoma, I, because Oklahoma is a destination based state, meaning that if someone from, um, a, the, na the neighboring town, and if it's a different county than my county, then I pay the state and she, the person who pay, who buys the yarn, they pay their specific sales tax according to their physical address. And that's the, the, the tax that I pay into Oklahoma. What, that sounds relatively easy, right? But Oklahoma expects me to tell Oklahoma who bought what and which county and which city the tax money I'm paying goes to. And they want, um, it's just kind of crazy. But okay, so that's my state and I live here and I can do that. But then if I do shows in other states, most other states now consider a, a day show, two day show to be like um, 
they what they consider a nexus. It creates a tax nexus in their state by doing a, a, a show, and then therefore every other every other purchase from that state I then owe taxes on for the whole rest of the year that that entire year which means that I have to file um, in Oklahoma I have to file monthly and each state is different so Texas is quarterly but other states are different um, <laughs> and if you don't do it perfectly then you have um, fees and penalties and interest and it becomes quickly just snowballs into a nightmare rather than um, something that should be fairly simple, but it's just not. If anyone, if, if you're not an accountant or a CPA, then it's just not simple. Okay, that's my, my wah wah um, about trying to keep Bigfoot in the, in the black and in the clear and, and keep our, you know, so to speak, cover our assets. And um, not that there's very many of them. <laughs> But you don't want to be in trouble with any state. Um, Texas especially. Man, they say don't mess with, mess with Texas, and they mean it. I didn't file right. Um, I messed something up. And then <laughs> they they froze my entire PayPal account. And um, where it was for not very much money. But that's okay. So I, I got that all straightened out, and I, I called them. They were very helpful. And um, it didn't take very many days, less than a week, less than five business days to get all of that straightened out. And then two weeks later, I got another bill for the same amount. <laughs> that was it. That was it for me. I, I was like, I'm done. I can't do this because um, I, don't, I don't deal in, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it's, it's small. It's chump change, to, to, I guess, to most states and those kinds of things. But... Um, for me, that may be the, that may have been the $3,000 that I needed to make that yarn order. And there's just not a whole lot extra after that. So it's, it's the best way to put it is, is paycheck to paycheck because I have bootstrapped this business, meaning that I didn't take out any loans for the business. And I, I personally feel like that's the best way to do it, but it does make it very much sliding in on the rails kind of every single month making sure that everything is covered which I don't have very many expenses but there are definitely some that have to be there just to again kind of protect your assets <laughs> so there you go there's my sob story but the point in that is um we didn't we decided not to do any of the stitches shows this year for 2019 um we are um, not going to do Dallas Fort Worth which I really am sad about because I do love that show. I may have to volunteer, just pop down there and, and volunteer. Um, and um, I'm, I'm forgetting what else, but but I would, I think I would break my own rule to do um, India Untangled. I would break my rule for that. And then um, I'm hoping that that will all be settled and um, maybe a little easier or some other solutions will, will be presented like apps. There's an app for that, right? Um, right now there's not because everybody's trying to get, just trying to figure out what the rules are. Um, oh, and by the way, uh, several of the states retro, went back and retro assigned fees and penalties and interest, even though that the, um, the decision was made in June of 2018 they went back to January of 2018 and so then that created um, what is that six months of penalties fees and interest that you have to pay for several of the states have done that <sighs> okay I'm not griping anymore but um so what I'm what I am what we are going to be doing are trunk shows because with the trunk show um, you are often able to negotiate with the local yarn store that um, they take payment and they pay taxes and um, it's kind of like you just get, you, you kind of split the sales. So that works out really well um, in states where I don't want to have to file taxes. I don't want to have to, um, you know, be considered a, a business on a yearly basis. I, I just sold yarn there once and... <laughs> They're going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Um, okay, so um, speaking of trunk shows, I will be on March 1st and 2nd. I will be in Kansas City at the studio. Yay! 
I'm so excited. Miss Sue um, graciously asked me to come back. <laughs> um, I love it. I love it up there. It's beautiful. And the knitters are just amazing people. I had so much fun last time just being able to sit and visit. It was just, not that it wasn't intense buying, but it was also very fun and relaxed and I got there were times when I was able to just sit and visit and knit with people and chit chat and that was great so I'll be there March 1st Friday and and, and um, also the second on Saturday and they are having a an Icelandic sweater knit along that they are casting on Friday night and so I'll make sure and have yarn for that it is let's see um, oh I didn't write the pattern down um, Now I'll have to just, I don't know what I'm gonna have to do, but um, you can check on their website. It is there, um, the studio, Kansas City. Um, if you click on Icelandic sweater, um, if you, whatever is in the tab for a cow, it's right there. And it'll take you to exactly what they're doing and um, what yarn you need. There's four different patterns to choose from. And two of them are really simple um, beginner, uh, color work where there's only like two colors per row so it's going to be really fun okay Whew. the next thing I'm going to tease you with is the next giveaway and I'm not decided a hundred percent that I think I'm going to do this giveaway uh, the last one I did on raffle copter and that one worked out fairly well. It's very easy to pick a winner and um, it, it has random.org for me. So that's kind of nice. Um, so I'm not sure what, how I'm gonna work that one yet, but I will make sure before I post it that I will put that in the, I will put the link in at the bottom of this video so that you can know how in the world to enter. Um, always check my Instagram, which is at Bigfoot Fibers. Um, the other place is Facebook. I try to always announce them on the Facebook page, which is Bigfoot, that's Bigfoot squished together, and then a space, Fibers. Um, I don't know why Facebook did that, but they did, they're weird. But this is what is give, I'm giving away there. And this is Cherry Cordial. It was, um, the last couple of years, it has been a self-striping sock colorway, and I have decided that I'm I'm putting the self-striping socks on the back burner because I'm not doing it as well as I would like. Um, I have pretty high standards of what I want to put out there and there's just a lot of people who put out really great self-striping colorways and I'm not super happy with mine. Um, so there you go. Um, so what I've done is I have done them in minis. I just kind of converted some of those colorways into minis. and. The light is a little bit bright, but this is a nice um, kind of a soft February in, uh, theme. But honestly, the inspiration for this colorway, that is really, really blowing that color out there. The inspiration for that colorway is my mom. So when I was growing up, she um, she always loved cherry cordials and she none of the rest of us liked them. So she always got the, she'd buy herself a box and then the whole month of February, she would have, um, maybe she'd buy two boxes in February, I don't remember, but she got them all. She didn't have to share them because none of us liked them. Um, but that, so um, that's kind of the, one of the ways I remember my mom is um, through food. And I don't know why, but I do. So um, I, again, I don't like cherry cordials, but whenever I see them, it makes me, it reminds me of her and the, the, she was just kind of a fun lady. So anyway, this is on, um, let's see, it is on Divine Sock, and that's a relatively new base for Bigfoot. And I love it because it is 85%, let's see, can you see that? 85% extra fine superwashed merino and 15% nylon. If I did my math right there. I hope so. Each mini is 20 grams, so you've got a total of five, and that's a 100 gram skein right there. And then each mini is also 87 yards. So you get 435 yards total. That's the way um, all, all, all of my minis are, are bunched together like that, so you get a full skein of yarn. But I keep squishing it because, oh my word, it is soft. It is the softest. Um, 
it, it just really is soft. I don't know how, I hate to say it's the softest of my bases yet, but really it rivals um, blends like this one that is silk and merino. It really does. Okay, next, let's see if we can keep this rolling so you don't just have to fast forward through the whole thing. Um, so it's been, it's, I, I just wanted to touch base on, it's been a while since I regular, regularly podcast. They've been really hit and miss, much more miss than hit. Um, of course, the winter time with seven children at home, um, things come up like uh, sicknesses and we all got the kind of the cough, the hacking kind of sinus thing that went on for a while and my husband has coughed for I think it's been four weeks now. He's not sick, he's just still coughing. And um, then, of course, again, with seven kids at home, there's all the activities and plays and auditions and I have two teenage drivers that are about to get their license, so we've had to spend, you know, we're spending time driving with them. And then, um, oh goodness, um, all of just the normal things that go on. And then also, um, I have been dealing with, I, I, I don't, there's nothing, there's no other way to really just, just kind of get gross here with you, but um, I have plaque psoriasis, and so, it's classified as an autoimmune disorder and there may be an allergic component to it. No one really knows, but um, honestly, I'm beginning to wonder if it's not some of the, the, uh, some of the ingredients in the dyes that I'm using. Now, of course I wear gloves and I wore the mask and, and all those things, but um, there's, you're still just exposed to it. So I'm going to be trying out, I'm really excited because I found some more natural dyes. I'm not going to delve into the, the absolute natural, like um, the bugs and plants yet, but I have found some other natural dyes, some from Japan, um, and I'm gonna try those and we're gonna see how that goes. And um, meanwhile, I've just been, um, Honestly, I'm not doing anything much different than I was. I, there, there can also be a hormonal component to it. Um, my dermatologist um, said that stress can bring about flare-ups. So um, where I'm at basically is most of the rest of my body is, is fine. It's healed up from the creams. I had it really bad on my elbows. At, you can barely see where it went up to like here. It's all smooth and... Um, it's not red or inflamed anymore, but it did, it, it was weepy and raw up to here on both elbows. I've got some other spots just in weird, various and sundry places and under my toenails. Yes, that's fun. Um, and no, it's not a fungus. <laughs> it's definitely psoriasis. But the worst place you, you may have noticed is I cut my hair off. The worst place has been my scalp. And it started um, about the time that I got my first really large order for wholesale and it started just right here in my scalp just right here and then it, it just started spreading and it, it didn't spread fast it spread very slow but the it didn't look like dandruff it didn't look like um you know something that you could just use like a dandruff shampoo and then it would be okay it was this is the part that's gross, and I apologize in advance. You might just fast forward a few seconds. I'll try to make it short. But it was weepy and bloody and um, just raw. And um, I was hair was falling out. I didn't ever have any places that like went bald or anything, but um, it, it just the the flakes were huge, like like thumbnail, like the size of my thumbnail. I'm not kidding. Um, and we've gotten it mostly under control. And I went ahead and cut my hair off just recently because, sorry, the curl, it just does what it wants to do. Um, so I could try to get some medicine down to it. And um, honestly, if this doesn't work, I'm going to take, a <laughs> I am going to shave it down to a two. I don't want to shave it down to a two. And it is not for any other reason than ease of being able to get the one cream that has worked um, on my scalp. So I have tried, um, if you have any great tips, I would love to hear them. Feel free to either email me at bigfootfibers at gmail or post a comment because you never know. But I have tried 
as far as medical intervention, it, it just went, it got cloudy. Okay, I hope that this is bright enough. Like it was totally sunshiny just a minute ago. Um, I have tried um, steroid injections. I have tried steroid, uh, like prednisone oral steroids. I have tried about four different or five different medicated shampoos, medicated oils, medicated um, sprays, foam. Um, but this is just the last vestige of it just won't give up the ghost, so to speak. So natural things, I've tried olive oil, coconut oil, um, essential oils, myrrh, frankincense, lavender, three different kinds of tea tree. Um, <laughs> what else have I tried? Apple cider vinegar. Um, goodness, I know there's things I'm forgetting. Um, the normal over-the-counter shampoos like Selsun Blue. Um, the ones that have salicylic acid in them. Um, honestly, there are so many that it's it's just ridiculous at this point. And I am really refusing to go over, to cross the line over into the immunosuppressant drugs, biologics. I, I'm just not doing it. Um, so I'm not willing to take those risks. Um, I would rather live with it. So right now, if I'm, if I'm out and about, then um, it's, it's under control to the point that it's just more of a fine dust or it looks more like a fine dandruff, which I'm, I'm much better with than chunks of scalp and bleeding and weeping. Okay, that was more than 10 seconds. But the point in that is um, sometimes in our businesses we have to evolve and change and this is pushing me to go a more natural route. And so there you go. On a more natural note, um, the other thing that I'm going to be transitioning over into is non-superwash yarns. Um, for one thing, I, you, there's only a couple of ways to do superwash. It's either by coating it with plastic, those scales on the, on the fibers have to be coated down, or they get knocked off. And they, the, that's pretty harsh chemical um, ways that you do that. There are a couple of greener methods to do it, but there's not a lot like you can't get a full range of bases that way so i've always tended towards the more luxury bases things like merino and silk or bfl and silk um my merinos tend to be uh, the super fine variety that 19 micron or less and and i love them however we we just talked about all of those chemicals so that's one reason but the other reason is quite honestly it wears better when it's not super wash. It, it, it makes a better sweater. The sweater doesn't drag and grow. And um, there you go. That's a whole nother podcast, a whole nother soapbox. So you just watch for that. There'll be some transitions. And as I come across um, those bases that I love and non super wash, then I'll be introducing those. Of course, I will definitely be keeping um, some of the fingering superwash blends so that you can do socks in them. I personally have been preaching for probably the last two years, um, two and a half years that I've been in business, that BFL is your best friend for socks. It doesn't need to be superwash. It doesn't pill. It doesn't felt. It's because the staple length is different than merino, and it's almost as soft. So there you go. I'm off that soapbox, but I'll, that's another podcast too. Okay. So some of you may know um, that. Well, let me skip that. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this. There are three things I'm gonna talk about real in quick succession, and one of them is I'm going to review um, signature needle arts. Um, they're stiletto tip U.S. size threes. I have been knitting with these on several different projects, and I love them. Um, and so while I'm showing you these, I'm also going to show you my hoe. I have a hoe in progress right here. And, um, there you go. That is the, um, the ribbing cuff of this other mitten. This is why it's a hoe. That is the, um, of course I get nervous whenever I'm talking on camera. And so I forget everything and I have to write it down because I have to continually look back and go, what am I talking about? Um, it's the, these are the Dragon Hide Fingerless Mitts by Karen Troyer Ladman. I'm, 
apologize. Karen, if I mispronounced any part of your name because being slightly dyslexic, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm just bad, bad with names. Um, so, um, the yarn is Plucky Knitter. Let me hold those up there again. And I'm, I can't even remember which Plucky Knitter yarn it is other than it's a blue colorway. <laughs> I don't know. I lost the band and I know it has camel in it. So this is the pattern that my son picked out. Did I tell you that I love these needles? I love these needles. Um, the join, the whole, the whole thing is, um, they're pretty pricey. Um, the price probably, I mean, if you're going to grade them quality to price, they definitely get a high B plus or an A. I can't say that I can't, I can't say they're an A minus. They're really great quality. Um, so quality for the price is really great. And then um, I'm going to say the only part that my might be, I might not like is the join, but quite honestly, they're as good as the Chai Gu joins. So there you have it on that part. And then um, the other thing is that when I knit, I, I, these get a higher score to me for ch than Chai Gu. And Chai Gu's are my, I always use the, um, the lace tip. These are stiletto tips here. And um, the reason why is because I'm a really loose woman. I mentioned I have seven children. I just, my gauge is, is very loose and I've had to figure out the little tips and tricks to make my gauge go more towards the direction of the designer. And I'm always having to go down needle sizes two, usually two needle sizes, sometimes three or four. And at that point, it's just not really the same. So um, these needles are really, really slick which is one of the things that helps me keep my gauge um, from growing and getting bigger and bigger. And then the other thing is the way that I knit, I will, um, so we're knitting two together here. Let's see if I can do this for you. The way that I knit is when I, can I knit on camera? I don't think I can knit on camera, guys. Um, the way that I knit is I don't ever, the, the needles never stop touching. So if I'm gonna knit, um, you know, I'm gonna knit in, then I'm basically, the needles just rub back and forth. And I uh, usually, part of the reason why I'm loose is because I wind up knitting back here and, and not up here on the tip. But, um, because I'll just keep knitting and just keep knitting and just keep knitting and then I realize, oops. <laughs> but um, since I rub the needles, and I, I don't know if you guys realize the way that needles are constructed, um, metal needles all get finished with a brush. And so um, they have a very fine brush that will come down here and it smooths them to a finish. And get, they get rotated as that going through that machine to polish them. And Chai Goose has um, just not as fine of a brush. And so whenever I'm knitting, it sounds like, I say sounds because I can feel the vibration um, as I'm knitting. And so it sounds like um, vinyl, like needle on a vinyl record, just almost, <laughs> I mean, just, you can almost hear it. And it, what I wind up doing is rubbing burrs into the chai goose, which is infuriating. Um, because you're, you're, you're knitting with something that has a little bit of a halo to it. Like this has got camel in it and it doesn't look like it has a halo. Not really until, can you see that? that tiny bit of halo, and then it starts catching. Um, and again, like I said, it's maddening. So that's my hoe, um, the Dragon Hide Fingerless Mitts by Karen Troyer Ladman. And the reason that my son, I, I kind of smirked whenever I said my son asked me to do that. Um, some of you may be aware that he lost the tip of his finger. Um, back in November, I was loading up. He was helping to load me up, he and my other two older girls at home. They were helping me load up the truck to go to the East Texas Fiber Festival. And that was on Thursday at about 11 and um, in the morning. And he got his finger, the tip of his finger caught in my dolly. My dolly converts from um, like a dolly dolly. I'm gonna go like this and it's not gonna make any sense until, but then it also converts into a cart. And so this part kind of slides out and it slides up. But when it does that, it, it has a, 
um, almost like a lever, like scissors, and he got his finger caught in that as he was putting it down. And it took off his finger um, diagonally across the tip. Um, he still had the nail on this part and this part was gone. But um, unfortunately, it also ripped down into here. And so they wound up taking his finger off just below that knuckle. And so he just, so he lost about the first third of that knuckle. And so he's 13 and Smarty Pants Man asked me to make him fingerless mitts. Fingerless mitts, guys, okay? Here's mom guilt already because I when it happened, I brought him into the girl. One of the girls came running into the house and saying in a very calm way, she, I'm very proud of her, my 16 year old said, mom, we need you now. It's no one's dead, but it is an emergency. There is blood and bone because I'm always teasing them that if is there blood, is there bone, then I don't want to see it. And I'm like, okay, there's blood, there's bone. And I did not finish my nursing degree, but I did work in the CVICU, which is cardiovascular intensive care. While I was in nursing school, um, I worked full time, tried to also put myself through nursing school. And I spent enough time in there that um, you, you just kind of, the calmness kicks in of, all right, and you just start going through the checklists. And um, so my 18 year old had him in the garage and she had him sitting down on a chair and she had him holding it up and um, she was putting pressure at the base of his finger kind of just being a tourniquet for him and he had gone into shock so really there wasn't a lot of blood flowing um but bless his heart he just couldn't look at it and i can't blame him not any i brought him into the house and i and i, and I actually laid him down on the floor and put his feet up because he was in shock and um i put a little tourniquet on it and then I, I kind of just looked at it to see, you know, how bad it was and what we were looking at. But I didn't look at, I only looked at really the top. I didn't turn it over much and, um, because I was trying to instruct them to go and find his finger <laughs> so that they could, you know, sew it back on. And he asked me, are, mom, are they going to be able to put this back on? And I was like, absolutely, they're going to be able to put this back on. Um, they put, they give people new hearts. People get new knees. They get <laughs> the modern miracles of science, kid. It's going to be fine. And it's not fine. It wasn't fine. So the mom guilt of the fact that he was helping me load and that he was using my cart and, um, yeah, yeah. And then I told him that they were going to be able to put it back on and they weren't. So it's a good thing we're months past when it happened. It happened back in November, the beginning of, of the month. And um, it, it just, <laughs> oh, I can barely talk about it now without crying. I, it's just a finger, you know, it could have been really a lot worse. And I don't mean to make a bigger deal out of it than it is, but it's still your child. So yeah, you feel their, you feel their, their hurts probably I can't say it hurt worse for me <laughs> but it did it did hurt my heart um, okay so I, I'm rambling and rambling um, but that that kind of um, that kind of made me realize one of the things that I would like to do with Bigfoot is um, I would like to donate to some charities and I've been just um, Honestly, I've just been praying about which charities to give to, and one of them is, um, a, you probably, if you haven't watched in a while, you may not remember, if you're brand new to the podcast, you may not know, but my oldest daughter is in the Air Force, and um, she's not had to be deployed yet, but um, anyone that is a mom of um, a military kiddo, I don't care how old they are, it's it's terrifying, and um my son-in-law is also in the Marines, so there you go, double whammy, and uh, they're both fine. They're they're fine. There's nothing you know bad that's ever happened to them. But a lot of our service members are not so fortunate. Um, my grandfather is um, a World War II veteran, and he has two Purple Hearts and a slew of of medals and um, bronze stars and silver stars, and um, he's just he really is a hero. But um, obviously with two Purple Hearts, he took, he was wounded twice. And back then they just sent you back in <laughs> because um, he didn't have any serious things. But again, um, 
I mean, a serious like amputations or anything like that. He did he did have to have some surgeries, but once you healed up, they just back then they sent you back out. Um, so that's one of the things that I, I've been looking into. There's an organization that provides um, all-terrain vehicles, all, not vehicles, all-terrain chairs, all-terrain vehicle chairs. I, I don't know how to say that. Um, these chairs are serious all-terrain. They can the they, the men and women who use them could still go hunting. They can go on the soccer field with their kids, and they can. Um, I don't know if you could hike in them, but you definitely can hit some rough terrain with these things. So it, it gives them some of their dignity and freedom back. And um, so that's one of them. And then the other charity that um, that I have decided that I'm going to, um, like uh, that for March, 20% um, of March's sales are going to go to the Crisis Pregnancy Outreach Center of Tulsa. And it's a, it's a great charity because um, it provides an all, um, it's not all encompassing care. It's, it provides another option for a mom who finds herself in um, possibly a, I'm scared and I'm pregnant or I, oops, I didn't realize I didn't mean to be pregnant right now. And um, they provide all kinds of things without being preachy or without shoving um, Bible verses down people's throats. They just love they just love them. And they do that by providing them with clothes, with furniture, with um, social services, with um, prenatal care, and um, just uh, child classes, parenting classes, and they really come alongside and support these women and girls that might feel like they're in a place where they don't really have anywhere to turn. So that is, is a very worthy cause. And um, obviously we love kids. We have eight of them. Although we joke that before we started having children, we didn't really like other people's kids. <laughs> Until you have your own, right? You just don't know what you don't know. Um, kids are hard. Kids are a hassle. Kids are, um, they are a, a time suck and they are a drain on your resources and finances. And I would not... Oh, and, and your body, if you're the mom, and your body, definitely. And I would not trade any of them for the world. Um, none of my battle scars, so to speak, um, I would not trade any of that for, um, for one less kiddo. I had several miscarriages, and that's not what this podcast is about, but um, it, it just, it is what it is. Um, so there you go. Um, but one, so on that note, one of the battle wounds that I do have is uh, I have a hernia. And so uh, it's an umbilical hernia. This is like way too much information podcast time. I'm sorry. I apologize. But I wanted you to know because this summer I will be slowing down, dying just a little bit. Um, I'll have about 12 weeks where I need to recover because I'm going to be having hernia surgery to repair about three different hernias that were caused um, from my abdomen, uh, uh, the abdominal wall. Basically, it's a huge diastasis recti where those those muscles that, if this were the line down, you know, that six pack of abs that, that I don't have, um, those muscles have separated out here and then the fascia that holds those muscles together has torn. Um, and the fascia, it's, when it stretches, it doesn't ever come back together. So I have opted, instead of having a laparoscopic hernia fix with mesh, I'm not doing mesh, I don't want to mesh my body. Um, <laughs> you know way more about me than you ever wanted to know. But I'm, I'm going to go, as I said, if I'm going to go under, I'm going to do the whole thing. I want to have the tummy tuck, not because I want to be skinny or um, have a flat stomach, but I want to be able to hike the, the local um, like Turkey Mountain here. I want to be able to go and climb Pikes Peak with my kids on a vacation. I want to be able to walk on the beach on a vacation and it's impossible to walk across sand um, with no abdomen. I mean with no, um, that's not what I meant to say, with no, with no abs, with no abdominal muscles holding everything together. Um, not to mention that, you know, it's just dangerous to be able to have your intestines poke out of your navel. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> to put it mildly, that's bad. So I've lived with it for um, several years, and 
honestly, it wasn't too much of a problem when I was pregnant because the baby always was in the way of the intestines and my navel. But we're not having any more kiddos and it's time to, it's time to get it fixed so that I can uh, be fit and healthy with my little kiddos um, because the youngest one is three and they don't need a mom who gets worn out because it's just like beats you to death when you're walking up and down the block when they're riding their bike. Okay, again, too much information. Okay, we talked about my hose, and now I'm gonna talk to you about my finished objects. Now, I also wanna preface this with, if you've seen these before, I apologize. I have lost complete track of whether I've shown these on the podcast or whether I just posted them on Facebook and Instagram. I don't remember. So, and I'm the world's worst at show notes. Okay, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat here, and I apologize. I'm rocking back and forth. I get excited about these things. Um, okay, so this is painting by Katrin Schneider, and it, it was knit for me by Sue L. I'm not only going to say her last initial, but Sue, you know who you are, and I love you. Um, it is knit up in super silky sheep. Let's see if I can show that. There we go, and the colorway is Victoria. It's knit in my size, and Sue did an amazing job. Um, I think it was a size 42 or 44. And um, it's the yarn is, if I didn't say this already, it's Super Silky Sheep. Super Silky Sheep, that is a tongue twister. And the colorway is Victoria. Um, I absolutely love the PBS show Victoria. I, I just love period dramas. I started a new, um, period drama that's a K-drama that's called Mr. Sunshine and the costumes are amazing. I, it's a little too much war for me, but that's okay. And then um, you gotta love 16 and 18 year olds to get you stuck on K-dramas. Um, the other one that I watched just recently that I love that I've dragged my my 13 year old son into watch with me as well is called, um, uh, why do I do that? I do that all the time. Um, it's called, oh, Memories of the Alhambra. And so that one's set in Granada, Spain. It's, it's just, it's a great, it's just great. It's fun. Okay, so painting by Katrin Schneider and knit by Sue, and this is gorgeous. And it's, um, it really is one of the warmest things I have. That silk doesn't have as much stretch as you might want, but what it lacks in stretch, it makes up for in warmth. Holy cow, this thing will smoke you out. It's got to be really cold in Oklahoma to wear that. Definitely under 40 degrees. And then everybody keeps their heaters so hot that it's 40 degrees outside and it's 80 inside. I'm thinking, you people are crazy. Turn that thing down. But I am also 45, so that may have something to do with it. Okay. Again, like I said, it's the too much information show. Here we go. This, this one I'm wearing right now is also knit in silky sheep. And this is a pattern by Francois Denoy. And um, she is, I, I always mispronounce this, so I apologize Frenchie in advance. It's, a, a, I always say the wrong thing first. Aroha, Aroha, Aroha. I think it's Aroha, not Araho. It's Aroha. <laughs> the dyslexia, it runs deep, I'm telling you. Um, so Frenchie actually knit this one. I did not knit it. This was my, um, her sample and it's a beautiful pie shawl. It's a shawl. It's called cane and in Gaelic, it means protection. So it is, I can't show the whole thing, but is that not gorgeous? It is absolutely just gorgeous and not because of my, it's knit in my yarn, but, um, Frenchie did a great job on that design. It's available on Ravelry, so is painting, and so are the Dragon Hide Fingerless Mitts. Um, those are all on Ravelry too. So, there you go. And then I was, uh, I struggle wearing pie shawls. I'm just gonna be right up front about that. I, I, I feel like um, I, I'm a little house on the prairie when I wear one like this, but it, it's not quite enough um, to really wrap it any other way. So, you know, hey, if you've got great pie shawl pointers, this is kind of how I've been wearing it because it has been really blustery, very windy, and I've just been tucking that up underneath there, and it is really, really warm. Again, that silk, you wouldn't think that it would, but it really, really does make it warm. And it also gives it a layer of sheen that 
if you, I, there's the sun, if it kind of catches it where you can see, it, it just has an amount of shimmer to it with the light bouncing off of that. Okay, so the next, um, the next thing that I was gonna show you, and I, I, I'm showing you these and I'm calling them FOs because they are, I didn't knit them. All of them were either sample knit or knit by, um, like I said, that one was knit by Frenchie, who was the designer. But this is also one of my absolute favorite pieces and I don't, I, I really am appreciative of the time that it took and um, the, the people that have sample knitted for me, I, I am so appreciative of them and I hope that they know it, that they are uh, forever on my friends list of, um, <laughs> it just sounds so cheesy coming out, but really, truly, I love you ladies, okay. This one is knit by Angela, also last name L. And you can find her on Instagram. I've, um, and give her a follow, give her a shout out, hey. So this is the Impressionist Shawl by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. And if you've never knit one of Helen Stewart's patterns, they really are a dream to knit because she has the whole step-by-step um, -step process and how many stitches you should have on row three and it just makes it lots, it makes it really easy to follow. So this one I love because it's, you've got so much length and you can wear it um, to help cover up, I think I've mentioned this before, those fashion faux pas. I hate the way tops nowadays lay on you and you have all this bra showing. I, I don't, I don't, I know that bras are pretty now and they have lace and the cut out back shirts and it's all supposed to be great, but I, I don't love them. And I don't, I don't love, like just having my shirt slide over and having my bra here, I, I don't love that. And so to me, I get a little more um, wear out of some of those kinds of tops when I can layer a, a beautiful shawl over it and um, or even just a little cowl that will kind of cover that up. And look at the stitches, these are just gorgeous. So the Impressionist um, shawl was supposed to be uh, yarn that was based off of Impressionist painters. And this is um, obviously Bigfoot fibers, but it was brilliant Britfoot. So it is actually a superwash um, BFL, which is Blue Face Leicester. And when you look at the spelling, if you're American, it looks like Leicester, like Worcestershire sauce. So we can't ever pronounce, I don't know an American who can pronounce Worcestershire sauce, right? You just kind of smush it together and it's Worcestershire. <laughs> we're Chester, we're Cheshire. It's an American thing, so I don't feel bad for butchering it. But um, the, the British BFL yarn is Blue Faced Leicester, and it looks like Leicester or Leicester. Um, but I promise it's Leicester. You know what? I say I promise, and watch me be me mispronouncing that one too. I wouldn't put it past me. But most people I've heard pronounce it, pronounce it as Leicester. <laughs> now I can't even do it. <laughs> Leicester. Now I've got Leicester. Le it's Leicester. <laughs> Leicester and Worcestershire. I'm never going to get those two straight ever again. But I, again, I was talking about the, the beauties of BFL and it really, it really is beautiful. By itself, it has just a hint of a halo and it's warm. It has twice of the bounce back, um, kind of that suppressed, uh, um, what am I looking for? Not suppressed, but um, potential, that potential energy that Merino has where, you know, that, that lock of hair is curly and it's, um, in BFL, it's also curly and long. And so whenever you stretch it out, it wants to go back. So when you knit it and it gets stretched out, it wants to come back, which is beautiful in a sweater. And you can see it blocks beautifully in a shawl. You are not missing that lace. It's there, you can see it. Um, so there you go. Um, I think that I mentioned, I don't think that I mentioned what colorways they were, but and now I don't really, I don't even write it down and I barely remember. I know this was Haystacks and the blue might have been Monet, Water Lilies, I don't remember. And um, I do remember what this was. This was Renoir's Roses because he liked to paint roses a lot. There were a lot of those. Um, and now that I say that, every time I say I'm sure of something, 
then I'm really not sure about it anymore. And I'm wondering, did I say that? I don't know. Okay, well, I've blabbed on for 49 minutes now. Obviously, this isn't very short. Okay, the very last thing that we're going to talk about um, is the winner of last, the last giveaway. And her name, drum roll, I would drum roll, but then the whole thing would shake and, and it would be bad, is Sherilyn Squibb. So Sherilyn Squibb, email me at bigfootfibers at gmail.com and let me know, hey, I'm the winner, yay! And then we'll get, I'll get your address and um, all that stuff and get this sent out to you. But she won four skeins of yarn and needles. So here we go, I'm gonna pres I'm going to show these off for you. And these are on top, so I'll show this off um, quickly. It's, baby, it's cold outside. And that is, again, um, a mini skein set by me, the Bigfoot Fibers, and it is in Divine Sock, which I promise you, it's, you just wanna pet it. Um, that's my whole plug for myself. I'm gonna pull this one out, and this one is a skein of Audubon Worsted by the Fibrists. It's 100% superwash um, merino. And their, their whole thing is, um, it's all based on scientific um, names and things. And so they're, the, uh, <laughs> I should have brought my cheaters. I can't read it. <laughs> here, let me put it up here. Can you read that? Right there. There we go. Right there. I can't read it backwards. But it is um, worsted and it's a beautiful color. This is the color way down here. Is that sugar light I can't see it it's not it's not their fault it's mine my eyes are going bad um, so it's 210 yards and there's 113 grams in the skein so there you go that's a beautiful color let me flip it this way get that tag out of the way there we go and then also Sherilyn won oh oh yeah we don't want that to fall on the floor Sherilyn also won a skein of yarn from Queen Big Ears Fiber Company, and she's in Kansas. Her name is Candace, Miss Candace. Here you go. And this is a 75% merino, 25% nylon superwash, and it's fingering weight. So this is 450 yards, and again, 100 grams. And the color, <laughs> I don't know that I read this color before, Candace, but I absolutely love it. If you watch children's movies, you will know what this is from. It is Lady Glitter Sparkles. Seriously. Lady Glitter Sparkles. Seriously. Okay, so I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's a good thing I hadn't read that name before now. Otherwise, okay. I wouldn't have stolen it. I promise. I was going to give it away. If this giveaway took me way too long to to put to get done. It really should have been done last spring. And for that, I apologize sincerely to the ladies and gentlemen that sent yarn for that. There's no excuse. There's just not. That was just um bad on me. Um but okay, so I would say better late than never, but oh, it's it, it is better late than never. And Sherilyn I hope that you are thrilled with it. So this is coming in, in um, Candace's package. I'm gonna slide that back in there so you know that the T and the stitch marker was from her. And then, um, did I just show that? I didn't, sorry. So there's some cute, there's a cute stitch marker. And then um, there is a couple of bags of tea in there, which, Honestly, I love the Tazao tea. There you go. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a tea snob. I don't like David's tea. I, I'll just tell you that up front right now. David's tea has way too many artificial flavors and ingredients in it. I will not do it. Um, okay, and in here too, there's a fibrous card. I don't remember now who sent these, but there are some um, stitch markers. Pro um, I don't remember which ones those came from. I apologize, guys. And then also, Olive and Two Oo. I tried to keep everything together in their own little package. Olive and two oo. Let's see if you can see that tag there. And this is a skein of why don't I have my cheaters? Corfu Sands Twain, which is 7525 merino and nylon. It's sock weight or fingering weight, 100 grams, 463 yards. So I don't know if this is superwash or not, but I'm gonna guess it is. But um, it's a beautiful color. Look at that. Look at those speckles, guys. 
it's beautiful. Okay, so um, what you had to do when you joined, when you signed up for this contest was, you've got, pardon me, oh, needles, needles. There are a pair of Likey Driftwood needles in a size US zero. They're 32 inch. So if you like to do two at a time toe up socks, these are your bag. And um, honestly, I don't love wooden needles, but I love likey wooden needles. They are um, bang for the buck, a little better than chai goo in my opinion. And I don't love wood, but these are about the only wooden needles that I can even get close to gauge on. Okay, so that's going back in there. Olive and two ooh. So what you had to do was you, you got points for like following Olive and Two Ooh. You got entry points for following um, Candace at Queen Big Ears and the Fibrists or joining their Facebook group or um, joining their, signing up for their newsletter. So those were all points that got you entries. Um, each little thing that you did um, got you entries into the, into the uh, giveaway. So I really liked the raffle copter um, the ease of it, it really wasn't hard to, to do at all, but um, I, I'm not sure, like a lot of Instagram giveaways, they go by, you know, like, if you like it, if you follow me, if you, um, you know, tag a friend, and, and those are great to do, but wow, they're hard to go down and um, count how many entries there are and then turn around and take that to random.org and put in, you know, entries from one to a thousand. Um, sometimes my giveaways have been, you know, there's almost 2,000 comments. So I've got to count all those to figure out how many. But there you go. Um, maybe, maybe someday I'll just scroll and close my eyes and point and that'll be the winner. But this time it's uh, Sherilyn Squibb. So Sherilyn, make sure you message me and um, I'll put this one in there too so it doesn't get lost. And I'm so happy for you, Sherilyn. So don't forget, there's going to be another giveaway coming up soon. It is going to be this week and it's going to be this because we're going to wrap up February with this. It is Cherry Cordial. So that's going to be up for grabs. And I hope you guys have a great week. Um, yeah, there you go. Bye.